District Commission meeting for Wednesday, March 27th at 7 p.m. First on the agenda, approval of minutes of prior meetings for February 28th workshop meeting minutes and February 28th regular workshop meeting minutes. I will open it up to Tim and Richard on any notes around those meeting minutes. Workshop meeting minutes? I have, I have no co nothing to comment on. No, nope. fine is presented. All right, and Richard, any comments around yours? Well, actually, Kim did them, not oh. me. But I'll I'll make a motion to accept them. I don't see anything in error with them. All right. So your motion to accept is both as presented or yes, just one? Both of them. Both as presented. Do we have a second? I'll. S All right. We have second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Next on the agenda, projects of minimal impact report, Jada. Um, there was one project that was approved as minimal impact, 25 Grand Street um, applied to do an in-kind roof and chimney repairs that was approved. Thank you. Next on the agenda, we'll open it up to comments by visitors. If there's any visitors who'd like to come up and make a comment, please do so now. Seeing that there is none, we will move on to, I actually am going to propose we rearrange the schedule a little bit and move old business to after new business. I have a quick one for that if you'd like. Oh, would you rather? Okay, go ahead, Dana. Um, the applicant, Peter Merrill, reached out regarding agenda item 4A, um, your continued item for 86B High Street. He's requested... Um, he stated, good evening, my name is Peter Merrill. I'm working on the plans for 86 High Street property. I ask for the board to allow me to continue this decision until next month as I am still gathering my information that you have asked for. All right. M motion to table item uh, A under old business. All right, we have a motion to table old business. We have a second. second. All right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, motion passes. Thank you, Dana. <laughs> All right, now we will move on to new business. First on the agenda, Marsha Brown is seeking a certificate of appropriateness to install metal roofing and four skylights on a property located at 20 Noble Street. Uh, so we do have two applicants. Um, so, sorry, two applications for this one address. So let's just make sure we're doing, focusing on the one and then we will move on to the other first. That is correct. I'm, I'm going to address 5A first and then go into uh, 5B. Perfect. And I'll have Dana just give us a little rundown and then we will open it up to you. Sure. Sure, Dana. <laughs> Summary, that's great. Yes. Uh, so the applicant is proposing to re-roof the main house with metal roofing material. Existing roof has asphalt sh shingles. Um, also seeking to install four skylights. Um, the skylight skylights on the Grand Street side of the roof will be 21 inches by 45 inches. Skylights on the east side of the roof will be 30 inches by 45 inches. Um, the applicant has some prior applications. They were before the board in 2000, the property was before the board in 2008, oh, not before the board, I apologize, but an application to replace the existing roof in kind with shingles was approved. They were before the board in 2019 to replace an over entry overhang, window sills, and broken windows. That was approved with um, a couple different conditions regarding broken windows to be replaced with vinyl windows, but shall remain shall maintain the existing grill pattern. The garage door may be replaced with fiberglass, but shall be in the same configuration with identical appearance as the existing. Um, and they were before <coughs> you in 2022 to construct a new workshop and barn. I think that's it. Thank you, Dana. All right, and if you can just state your name for the record and then tell us a little bit more. Marsha Brown, owner of 20 Noble Street, along with my husband, Rob Dumaris, who's a local guy. Um, so um, you saw the last time I was here, um, uh, the barn application for the metal roof because we can't keep these asbestos shingles on our roof because of the wind. And so now we have, we're very excited about the metal roof project now continuing on to the main house. Um, 
uh, just to give you an order of magnitude on the cost, uh, to re-shingle that with the asphalt shingles was about 15 to 17,000. It's about 40,000 to do in, in metal. So it's, it's an improvement on the house value. Um, but we think it's worth it because um, with the high wind, um, even the new houses that were built down on uh, across from the ballpark were losing uh, shingles. And it, if I can point you to the picture of the barn and how well that came out, we are very ecstatic about how that looks, how crisp and clean it is. And so that's how, that's the, the size. Um, and I like the white um, better because I think it goes with the white trim better. Um, as you know, across the way in the park, there is a metal roof, but it's green. Um, I think that's park-ish. <laughs> I'd rather have a metal roof that is in keeping with the, um, the trim. And I, I like the white, how it came out. I think it looks stunning. So while we're up there, um, my dream has been to move my office up to the what used to be the maid's quarters. There's heat and electricity up there, but it's very stuffy. And I would love to take advantage of the sunsets and sunrises that we get from that house. Um, so the least high wind profile is to do um, uh, skylights rather than a dormer. Because right now when we, we have dormers on the, you know, you've got the, on this um, constructed house, we've got big house, little house barn motif from the 1800s. The little house has the dormers on it. And when that wind comes, it just slams it. So um, my thinking was the, um, the dormers would achieve the ventilation, the, the, s the visibility, the sight, and um, uh, be less windage on it. Um, one change from the application that is in the supplement that Dana had followed up with by an email, perhaps that's in your packet too, where the trim of the skylights comes standard brown. I think that's going to kind of not look in keeping with the white metal. So I would like to paint those to match the metal. So when you're looking at it from the street, Grand Street, and you see how they've redone the windows to be very narrow and tall, I'd like to mimic that on the, s on the roof with two tall, narrow, uh, white-trimmed um, skylights. Now, as Dana uh, mentioned, on the back side, the windows are different, and the rafters are also different. So those are proposed to be 30 inches um, and the, the front is uh, 20, 21, 21 inches. Let's see. The other material relates to the, um, the uh, 5B. So I don't have any other um, explanation. Okay, so we can that, open it up it. to questions from the board, and they Please. can ask you if they have any need any further information from you. Mm -hmm. So we'll go ahead and open it up. Do we have any questions for this applicant tonight? Richard? I, Thank you, I Richard. Am, <laughs> I am familiar with the metal roofing on the barn, and uh, honestly, I think metal roofing fits the historic district well. Uh, that and Slate are the two best choices, in my opinion. It's just more hysteric historically correct. Um, mm -hmm. In fact, even looking at the survey of your house, I mean, you've got one that's rated excellent integrity because so many of the things are original. Mm -hmm. One of the things that ain't is the roof being asphalt shingles. So to remove that asphalt shingle and put in a metal roofing, I would have no qualms with whatsoever. Um, the skylights, I know they kind of alter the roof some. Um, it seems like the smaller ones would be on the side facing the ball field by dimension that is correct um you know i i don't really have a problem with it. i mean we're allowing um solar panels onto roofs now so a skylight here and there i really don't have a big objection to i guess it's not my favorite thing in the world but it's pretty minor in the big scheme of things so mm -hmm. all right any other questions or comments tim um, thank you for an exceptionally complete application, first of all. Uh, I, like Richard, don't have a, an issue with the metal roofing, especially the style that you chose. I think I would have been more opposed to it if it was standing raised metal seam, but you chose more of an corrugated type. 
it's not corrugated. It, it does have, it have a standing seam it to it. It is a standing seam? Is it, it is the same stuff that you proposed that you showed the picture of the barn? Correct. Exact. Yep. Yep. So if you pull up how, I mean, I think the barn came out fantastic, and I don't know if it's this sheet of the application, if you can find it. It's not. It looks good. more rippled than the standing. That's not the. Are you looking? My at envisioning it? of the standing. Yeah, I'm looking at a color photo of it. Um, okay. Is um, it's white. Yeah. Just like the stuff that's on the. On the. Uh, the roof of the pines building that they built, the green. It's. It's similar to it, it's but it's not it, that. It, but it is. Yes. It's wider. It's crisper. And it, exactly. does, it does have a standing seam to it. It's, but it's, is it a shape or is it is a rounded top to that stand? It's bent over. Yeah. You know, it's, it's manually bent over. And uh, the wind rating on this, I forgot to mention, is 150. Yes. Yes. Right. I think to your point, though, Tim, it, there is seams, but it's not as prevalent as you can with exactly. other metal Exactly, yeah. Waves. It's not that sharp. Anyway. Um, I, I have, I would, I'm going to support this application as presented, so. Thank you. <coughs> this. Yeah, actually, I just wanted to say two things. Thank you for such a complete application. And also, I really appreciate the quality of materials that you've chosen. Like, the manufacturers are, you know, of high quality. You haven't just gone for just getting the job done. You want to get it done right. So I really appreciate that. Um, I have no problem with adding skylights to the roof. I think, you know, if it, if it were my house, I might hesitate to put them on the park side where it's so obvious, but I also understand it's, it's making, uh, expanding the function of the house and I think um, easily reversible should somebody else want to come in the future and, you know, make it more authentic in their view. But um, I think that's a, I, I would support this application as it stands. Thank you. Richard? And <clears throat> I would have to agree. I'd certainly appreciate the full application that's so complete. Um, and I know we were discussing the nature of the metal roofing. I, I certainly agree that the corrugated roofing looks more traditional to an old house, but at the same time they use screws, and I know that that can be problematic over time, and I think it's actually an inferior product to a standing seam. So I'm far more accepting of a standing seam because it seems to be far more durable and that's really what we need on these houses is durability just like they were built durable. I will uh, just respond and say that the contractor that we are using is a, a local guy, um, Patrick, and he makes sure if you've gone around and looked at standing seam um, roofing, sometimes they forget to measure out equidistantly and so you will have like the left roof have maybe this much of a, a panel and the other one on the other on the right side won't match it. And um, not with our contractor, he's very in tune with, with that and making sure, especially since it's such a visible building from the park, that everything's gonna be symmetrical. So just wanna add that, put in a plug for Patrick. He's done great work so far. So um, because it's the main house that you are proposing this on, I just had a couple of questions. Um, so the flashing around the chimneys is, uh, do they have anything kind of special that they do this for the metal roofing? Or are they also installing the skylight or is it two different contractors doing the work, sorry? The same contractor is doing both aspects okay. of the work, the, the metal roof and the skylight because he's gonna be there, he has to bend the flashing around it. The existing flashing is lead around the chimney how, if you look at the cupola, how it, um, on the barn, how that came out, I suspect that's gonna be very similar to how he cuts out for the roof, uh, for the ch two chimneys that are on that side. Okay, um, and he's also where, um, I know it's hard to kind of gauge what's up there until you're up there taking things off and removing it, but he's aware that if he encounters any problems like with the chimneys and requires extensive repairs you will have to come back I just want to make sure that you're aware of that yes okay. yes with that and thank you for the reminder 
because there is a, um, I call it a stink pipe. Yeah, the, the venting pipes. I the also saw pipe. a couple pictures. And Tim may be the best. Okay, so I'm looking at it on the box bay side. That stink pipe, I think, is ugly. I'd like to move it. I guess there is a way to move that stink pipe to comply with code. I think it has to be above the windows. So that's been my ask to the contractor to figure out how to get rid of that because I want some clean lines and I think it's ugly Is if we finish right underneath that window? Not exactly underneath that. The maid's quarters is on the left is on the noble side of the house. That one is finished. So if it's if it's accessible it can be moved. It is it can be it is very accessible. It can I'd easily like to be moved to move it and I for, I didn't at the time of the application so I guess this would be an add-on to the application that I want to move that stink pipe on the Grand Street side of the house so that it is not visible and it's ugly I actually would have no problem moving that I think that's again a functionality <laughs> of a house it is something that is required it's not going to change my mind in this at all um, and I am very happy to hear that you're not having like the roof done and then they cut into it to do the skylights that he's taking these into effect because I, I'm not saying anything about this project, but I've heard horror stories like where you add on after the fact and you had all this work done and then you get leaks and other things. So I'm happy to hear it's all happening at once and that the one person in charge is doing all of the same time. So he's very much aware of what's happening so he can flash accordingly make sure that the skylights are put in that there's going to be no leakage there so i'm very much in favor of this but any other questions or comments concern or motions i'll make a motion to approve as submitted Sorry, I had... yes liz before we go to the motion just um it references a t-type drip edge and uh, is that going to look just like the barn the drip edges do you know the drip edge yes okay it's i just want to make sure that we don't have a kind of you know a three inch drip edge all the way around that's going to be exposed and kind of a heavy cover your trim no um the thing, only thing we've asked him about is what do we do with snow mm -hmm. f sliding off and is that going to be a problem mm -hmm. um i guess those clips can be added on later so i guess that would it, be a different you'll have to have but snow guards they're, they're they, okay they're almost decorative little prongs that stick down into the center of the channels and you'd only use them over areas you're concerned about protecting, like stairways. Well, then I guess that would be on the on the um, the back side of the house on Noble. Sometimes we have a if it's too close to where you park, you might want to protect that area. You don't want to put them all over your roof, but only to protect what that falling snow may hit. If it hits the ground and nothing damaged, then you won't put them in that area. Okay, all right. Um, I, I guess for completeness, can I add that to the application along with the stink pipe? Because as the motion is right now, it's as submitted. I, I would just want to make sure submitted and as amended. So I was actually going to ask that same question. Yeah, so <laughs> I'll retract the motion, but now that leads to the numerous styles of snow guards. Um, oh, I, this is out of my area yeah, of expertise. They're, they're decorative little, little ones. There's full bars that can go all along the whole front edge of the roof i'm not interested um, in that i know that that was put on um not too far i guess i'm pointing in the wrong direction um on our high street i can't remember the woman's name she's kim's house yes i was gonna say i feel like that's more Kimberly's. typical for the snow guard you're talking about of a mansard roof this is a gable so right. i can't imagine that would be the, the ones with the bars is i think the remodel for the liquor store used those the same as well. They have. <coughs> I, I like my husband's idea. Let, let's let's table the guards, or not table the guards, but I will come back. For the guards. Once I have pictures, because I want to see these things. They go to 12 Grove Street. <laughs> the barn has them. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> just remember, I'm, I'm working on the barn right now, so just look at the roof pot. <laughs> I will. Thank you very Adam, much. Adam, did you have a question or comment? <coughs> well, just, I mean, I think if we could amend it to just include Snow Guard, clearly their <laughs> choice of style I don't think has to be questioned. So I, I think if we throw Snow Guard into the description, into the amendment, and leave it up to their discretion, 
I don't think we're going to be displeased with what they choose based on everything else that we've seen. All right. Tim? You know, I, I think I'll concur. I, I, I personally feel if they presented us with three alternatives right now, we would say good to all three. I mean, um, so I think you're right that it won't matter. I'm not, it's not going to change my, my mind to say, no, you can't use that snow guard, use that snow guard. So, Richard? I, I think the only thing I'd be opposed to is the long bar style, but I would guess that it's not what they're choosing anyway, so. I, on the record, I do not like those bar styles. Yep. <laughs> not so on my house. I guess maybe if we only limited that, just yeah. be official about it, I'd be fine with it. <laughs> so, okay, hold um, one second. Because um, that was very similar to what I was going to say, Adam. Like, I'm pretty much open to almost any design, but I would say I would not want a full guard around the perimeter of the the thing so now you can so a motion to accept as presented with the condition that snow guards if chosen to be installed would not be the long full bar style they would be the in place smaller style cannot be long bar bar style And anything about the stink pipe? They can move it, as long as there's one on the house. <laughs> Got to have it no matter what. Right, but that is something she added to the application, so I want to make sure we have it. So So moving of the... Uh, I have moved stink pipe on grand side to be... Um, I just stink pipe on grand side Call it building vent be because that would be more appropriate. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> building vent? Thank you. George, you're a plumber. What's it called? What's that? What's the stink pipe called? <laughs> we'll put both, just to be sure. All right, so I have it written as building vent, vent stack on grand side to be moved. And then snow guards, if chosen to be installed, cannot be long bar style. All right, so we have a motion as written with those two conditions. Conditions. Do we have a second? We have a second? Further questions or seconding? Okay. So whoever's doing minutes can choose. All right. All those in favor with motion as presented? Aye. Just two conditions. All right. Aye. Motion passes with those two conditions. And then we will move on to the second application. And Dana, I will put that over to you. Yep. Yeah. So um, the applicant is proposing to repair an existing porch roof after it was damaged by a tree falling onto it. Repairs are proposed to be in kind to the existing structure. The proposal includes modifications to one 28 inch by 48 inch window, which will be, which will be replaced with a 28 inch by 45 inch window. Um, the same historic applications now to include the roofing project. Um, has been before the board to know I believe that this area of window replacement is similar to what was approved to 2019 or the ones that she's replacing with are similar to what was done with the 2019 application which I do have with me um, if there's any questions about that application all right thank you and do you want to give us a little more background on the project I do want to give you a little bit more background, but I was just ch double checking um, the dimensions that I gave Dana. Um, yeah, we've had some <coughs> excitement uh, with this house with the uh, windstorm in December, and uh, I just want to make sure I have the flashing and the and the window dimensions correct because, as Dana said, everything else for the roof repair it's all in kind, which is you know the exempt part of the project. What is before you uh, jurisdictional wise is. Um, the window, the window is going to be shortened because of the flashing. So I handed out um, prior to the meeting a picture of the sill, and you can see how close it is to the roof that's being replaced. And in order to get the flashing up, that sill has to move. We're going to use that sill because they don't make sills like that anymore. And I put this ruler up on the roof towards this side that's slanting out a little bit more. And you can see that 
The flashing comes up to about the four inches. The window seems to be about either the seven or eight inch mark. And so in order to get that out of the way, we have to raise it up, I guess, is, I don't know, four or six inches. I, I, until he has that flashing in, I don't know exactly how long that window is going to be. This isn't a window that's seen from the road because the porch roof is in the way. No, I don't know if that makes any difference to, to any of you, but um, I don't have an exact dimension until I see where that flashing is. But it's in order of uh, a four to six inch shortening. But everything else is going to stay the same. The, the top of the window, the decoration that's on the top, this is a replacement window, so we don't touch any of the outside opening. Um, I guess I'll start with my couple of questions. Um, you said he's going to use that same sill. Is that sill actually in pretty good shape? Because the only reason I'm asking is because of how that flashing, I can't imagine water didn't kind of start seeping into it. I'm curious. It, it does look like it's getting moisture, so I'm just curious. As... Okay. So if you can't use the sill as you're proposing, I, I'm assuming you'll do um, an in-kind. Okay. Rob's an excellent. Uh, okay, so the same dimension, same look, all of that. And then as you're raising it, so I get replacement uses the, the opening. Are you looking to bring up um, yeah, the siding to fill in that and bring up where the sill is? Or are you looking to keep the sill below and use some kind of filler? I just want to make sure I'm understanding how they're shortening go, that window. You know, siding all the way down. Okay, so you'll raise up where the sill is and then do siding underneath it. Yeah. Okay, I just, I've seen some weird window fill in, so I just want to be sure how that's I being think it'll done. look better. All right, and then I will go to Liz. Uh, actually, just, it does say on the construction contract page, um, the contractor said, and it, I imagine this is his preference, and there may be some leeway here. Maybe you've already discussed it with him, but he says, um, the wall details minimum eight inches of EPDM membrane up, up the wall with two inches behind siding. So that would be six inches exposed flashing um, above the roof to the bottom of the siding. And then, mm. but that also suggests your window would be, I think, a little bit shorter even than what we're saying here if it's going to come up so that he has eight inches of wall below the sill. Um, but that maybe at the window he'll compromise that and bring it a little lower. I'm not sure. <coughs> we, we could specify today, but we wouldn't want to cause leaks either. <laughs> I would just say that this homeowner thought that that stuff was going to be behind some of this stuff that I wasn't yeah, going to be having. It go up, and then the, the siding will go over. You can certainly do that. You can, you know, cover the siding more if you want. But the siding then is just at, r at more of a risk of sitting in getting wet. Um, you know, this would be a recommendation Definitely for durability of the siding. Wet as it does right now. Yeah. Is the current roof sheet metal? Uh, it's um, it's going to be rubber right now, <coughs> asphalt. Currently, currently, it's rubber. Currently, it's it was asphalt. Yeah, it was I got like, punctured. Oh. This this part looks metal. There's a, a there's a cheaper. like a four foot section between where this window is and the flat roof, which is about twelve by fifteen. Twelve by fifteen roof that got punctured by the uh, pine tree that came down. That little branch. <laughs> no, really. he's, he's joking. He's joking. <laughs> yeah. I, I will say that having been out there about an hour ago, uh, there's m multiple different types of stuff that they've over the years put on that roof. That's because it kept leaking. Right. Let's just add another layer. <laughs> So I'm just looking to make sure I'm understanding which window this is. Th you'd actually look at this from Mount Vernon. Or is it Noble, is it? Noble. Noble. Looking at it from Noble. It's on the left side of the house, but faces Noble as see. you're looking at it. Right. You can see the top of it from Noble. But if there's a picture um, that yeah. Dana had done with a, a red arrow, right. and it's... it's Noble, I believe. That's yes. Yeah. Right. So, yes. Yeah. So I understand it's that window. It's that window. Right. But I'm just trying to see the view from the road. So let me yeah, ask. Yeah, because this, this is from our backyard. It's not from the road. Um, so the trees usually ask, obscure is it. it. This window over here on this side. Yep. Above the roof. So it's tucked up in the corner where it's nearly impossible to see the bottom of it. 
unless that you're is, up on that roof. That is correct. That's why I mentioned you're not going to see it from Noble yep. Yep. because the roof, in addition to any vegetation that's there, is going to obscure hey, that you're bottom. You're lucky if you can see the top half of the window from the road. Yeah. I mean, I'll see it out my other window, but... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it, so it's really an out of sight place on the house. This is what I'm getting at on this. That is it's, accurate. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, I, <laughs> so you know, I, I certainly agree that you know, m moving the bottom of the window up to better protect the house from wet water intrusion here makes sense. And you know, it, it's in a spot that's very difficult to see anyway. So I don't know if you could do it wrong. You know, anything's going to be better, but. I, I'm in favor of this. <coughs> Tim? I'm just going to add that sometimes the old ideas of putting that window close to the roof was a bad idea. <laughs> um, it was never correct, really, to have it there. So I'm total support of having this correction. Any other comments, questions? George? I'll just say I'm amazed that both of these applications are so complete. Just a fantastic job. Thank you. And I do have a couple of questions after we vote, so. Okay. Before the next applicant or? Yep. Okay. Real quick, just for them. Okay. Uh, any other comments, questions, motions? Fine, I'll do one. Or right. Richard can do it. Go ahead. I'll make a motion to accept this as presented with the ability to shorten this six, eight, even 10 inches if need be, limit it to maybe 10, just so that gives you some leeway where you're not sure exactly where this is gonna fall. Do you wanna cover if they are not able to reuse that sill? I'm sure they'll make something that's, yeah. Okay. I, I have no doubt that they're gonna keep this, mimic it and essentially shorten it, but mimic it if they need to replace any material. Do you want that as a table, or sorry, a condition, or you're happy with as written? You can do it as a condition if need be, but I really, these are not the kind of people that I've had to worry about. They're very complete, very thorough, and have done a good job in every instance we've seen, so. I'll put it just so you don't feel like you have to come back if you do end up having to go that route, so it's not a question, in my opinion, yeah, just that's, to that's cover it. Enough. So It's more thorough that way, I suppose. Yep. All right. As I write, we can move on. Uh, do we have a second for um, the motion with the condition of if the sill cannot be re reused, that it will be in-kind replacement? I second. It. Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Motion passes, but I believe we have a board member who has a general question. Yeah, just a quick question for you. Because you own that house. It's a beautiful Burbage house. Do you happen to know the um, barn that you have? Is that over 50 years old? happened to know if there was another garage or barn attached to the house at one point? Yeah. There was. Microphone. Microphone. You do want me to still sorry, be on? Not yeah. my, if right, you're talking sorry. about mine. Sorry. sorry. Um, I will still be on. So if you're on Grand Street and you're looking at the barn that is not yet going to be roofed because we still need right. to bring some of the, the timbers back together again. Um, the, uh, there used to be just this roof that would go out from halfway down that side of the barn facing my neighbor's house because there was a brick foundation there and you can see where it used to attach. So if you were looking you know, at old photos, you would have seen a, a lean-to off of that. Would, do you think it was torn down in the 60s? Early 60s? I. I don't remember it uh, no. playing tennis out there. No. I, I don't know. Um, I, I, I suspect it might have been soon earlier than that, only because Did your there house have a lightning rods on it? There used to be because I trip That'd over the... That'd be one the of them? Oh, yeah, sorry. yeah, no, but, but it used to have lightning rods because the wires are still there on the house and the um, things going into the ground are still there. <coughs> Missing this thing, yes. Do you have it? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's in Florida. 
Thank and you. they're trying to, we've been trying to find this for six months that this came off of that house because she was telling us the house was torn by down by Stackpole and another guy in the early 60s. Yeah, and she has the uh, cardinal uh, points of dismissing that. Oh. He found the wind vane? <laughs> what? That's what it is, yeah. <gasps> oh my gosh. Can I have a picture of it so I know what it used to look like? <laughs> Yeah, actually, yeah, just if you want to email me, it's Great Falls uh, at Comcast. You're on, you're on air again, Jordan. You, you can also. <laughs> you, you can find them at the museum on Sundays. <coughs> it's in Florida right now. If she saw it going down, and we think it'd come off of your place, but we're not sure. We couldn't tell you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next on the agenda, and we're going to have him move from the board to the applicant side. Adam Young is seeking a certificate of appropriateness to remove two chimneys on a property located at 32 Prospect Street. Dana. Yep. Um, so the applicant is proposing, again, to remove both of the chimneys to below the roof line to repair areas of ceiling that have been experiencing leaking and to reshingle the roof. Um, there's a number, number of historic applications, most of them revolving around various fence, um, porch renovations, windows, and um, some back and forth about repairing and demolishing the barn. The most recent application that was before the board was in 2019. Um, they got a certificate of appropriateness to remove the back deck and replace with steps um, with some conditions, the wood to be painted and railings to match either the two existing porches currently on the house, but not the deck that's being replaced. That's All right. Know. Thank you. Adam, please state your name for the record and then tell us a little bit more. Uh, good evening. My name is Adam Young, uh, resident at 32 Prospect Street, which is the property in question. And... Uh, like the application had said, um, lots of neglect by previous owners. Um, it's like a game of musical chairs. <laughs> we are the ones left standing in the house when the music stops um, and the water is falling through my, my daughter's bedroom ceiling. Um, so I've looked at a couple different options and I think the most cost effective way is to just, again, tear the chimneys down below the roof line, uh, patch over and then uh, reshingle um, the house. Um, the chimneys are, attributes of the house obviously they're they're physically there but architecturally um, they don't really add to the overall look of the house and the chimneys really can only be seen uh, from the backyard or as as you're coming down Prospect Street if you happen to be looking directly at the chimney um, so I don't think visually it's going to detract too much from the house um, by having them removed all right um I'll start. I have a couple of comments. I went by your house quite a few different times at different times of the day, um, kind of walked different areas, and I was trying to figure out how much can we see these um, particular chimneys. I also am going to point out on the historic photo that is part of our review, it is not the same chimney, and it's been lowered quite a bit just from the view line. It could be but the cap is different, so I do believe it is a different chimney than that historic photo. So for me, I don't necessarily have an issue with this, and the reason being, if this was a center um, chimney colonial or a gable with the two chimneys on either side, I would definitely have an issue with this because those are character-defining features. With this being a very unique octagon front house, I don't see this necessarily as a huge part of the design element to me but I'm curious what the other board members feel like. Any other questions? Liz. Yeah, I mean, I, it's, and I appreciate what, you're, what you've just said, Laura, because I actually really feel pretty strongly about keeping chimneys on historic houses because um, it's not just a character-defining feature of your house, it defines a neighborhood a whole historic neighborhood to have all those chimneys and when they start going missing which they do because inevitably remodeling efforts people want the chimney out of the way especially if it's not being used um, but based on what Laura's saying and looking at the photos again I can see what the point here is your chimneys are not actually really visible 
<laughs> from any particular view. Um, slightly from the front, but again, like I don't think you would notice that it was <coughs> missing in this specific case. So I, I don't think this is like setting a precedent in any way to approve taking them down. Um, I know masonry repairs are exorbitantly expensive. Um, and I assume, the thing is once it comes below the roof line, that's it, like, you know, they can do whatever they want. They can just take them out at any time and it's beyond the purview of the board. But um, I think in this case, I, w I would support it. Richard? I, I know in the past we've had several projects like this where they want to remove chimneys and often we do have them do a faux chimney, you know, if, if they're not keeping the original one. Um, I'll be honest, I went into this thinking, you know, at least maybe keep one of them. I know there's two currently, but, you know, listen, listening to your reasoning on this, I'm, I'm starting to be inclined otherwise because you're right, they, they are, the one is tough to see from the road. It, do, it doesn't stand out, it's not prominent. And in fact, the house itself, you know, is, again, it's one of those very good integrity ones. It's, it's very substantial in itself, you know, it, the fact that it's such a unique shape and size of it, it, it doesn't even make you think of the roof, you know, it's just the shape of the house and itself is more the attraction and the notable thing on this one. So you, you guys have kind of convinced me to not ask for a faux chimney in this case, I guess. George? Uh, these chimneys aren't being used? The, um, the larger chimney at the front of the house has been inactive for I don't know how many years. The rear chimney, the smaller of the two at the back of the house, has been used to uh, vent the boiler and the hot water tank um, in anticipation of knowing that chimney work was going to have to be done at some point to what level. I actually upgraded to a high efficiency uh, boiler that actually vents through PVC out uh, the foundation. Okay, that's so it's only been used for the hot water um, tank, which has been adding to the internal um, uh, erosion just because it doesn't have enough to uh, vent out through the top. Um, so I can only imagine what that's been doing to the top, you know, six to eight feet of the chimney. Up until recently, um, the boiler that I bought was a combination boiler. I've had that converted over to also run the hot water in the house as well. So everything's coming through the same unit, which is rendering that rear chimney completely inert, not being used for anything right now. So both chimneys are completely inactive. Um, and, and to your point, as far as internally, um, even though the fireplaces won't be in service, they very much add a lot to the inside um, decor of the house and those aren't going anywhere. I love the fireplaces. Um, it's not a pass through, but they share opposite sides of the wall. So we have one in the dining room, one in the living room. It adds to the overall character of the house. So once it's below the roof line, that's where it's gonna stop. I mean, so that's just strictly for structural, you know, leak proof on, on the roof is, is why we're, we're bringing it below the roof line, so. Tim? I think you said my, <clears throat> my name before I even raised my finger. Um, uh, the original chimney was probably seven feet taller than this one based on the historic photos in the background and had, we used to call acorn tops, dual acorn tops. This has been rebuilt at some point in the history of the home um, and shortened. It's short enough that it still functions well. Um, and you mentioned that these chimneys feed fireplaces that are currently, the fireboxes are still in your living room or wherever they are. And there's a large momentum for gas inserts in those fireboxes which radiate much looking like gas like a fireplace and to remove that chimney would eliminate that potential advancement if you ever decided that you wanted to have that because then it, it wouldn't vent into that chimney a liner would have been installed to vent that gas appliance um, but without that chimney that's not a potential any longer um, and that's just food for thought for your perspective uh, personally I'm not in support of this application to remove the chimney it to me although it's not that obvious to the street it is a little bit but we've held <clears throat> other applicants 
forced them to put back jimmies when they took them down without permits. And others we've let take one down. The corner of uh, Maple and Linden removed one, which was right in front of facing Maple Street. So we're a little wishy-washy on that, um, but that's my opinion. I think you would f have a future potential really to repoint the chimney or rebuild it if it's in de that degraded um, and then cap it and wait till you might decide later. That's be my opinion. Uh, the one that you spoke about that served only the water heater for a while, um, that's exactly why that degraded so quickly because the efficiency of the water heater when the chimney was built is way better now so that gas fumes cool and acid eats the, the material which before it was able to escape into the atmosphere. Um, and I don't I can only see that particular chimney really from just an aerial view. Even the historic photos don't show that chimney. At least it's not visible. It probably was there. But the one that you can see from Prospect, uh, the one that used to be really tall, um, I'd like, I would be opposed to having that one removed to the, to the roof line. That's, and uh, great job on recreating. I mean, this, I'm very familiar with your property. I've been in that home dozen times um, and it looks amazing compared to when I was in that home uh, so well done Thank you. Um, <clears throat> do happen to notice in the photos that you're losing a window sash on your top floor it's falling that out will be addressed when the roof is, is I mean yeah it, so uh, repositioned and re-roofing it with asphalt shingles if that's that is part of this application I don't have an issue with that the only piece that um, I'm not in favor of removing the chimney, but I would be in favor of repairing the one that's facing Prospect and the one in the rear of the house, I would support removing. But a home of this size and age would always have had a chimney, so I think it should keep one. That's my opinion. I just had one kind of comment around, I know, Tim, you feel like the board's been a little wishy-washy, and I just want to address where in my opinion on the ones I voted on in the past, those are character defining features to me where again, it's a central chimney or it's a gable on either end, the chimneys on either end of the architectural features. For me with octagon houses, they didn't always have a very defined area for chimneys. In my opinion with them, the ones I've seen out, it's always been different. So I definitely understand what you're saying where we've had some have to recreate it, some we haven't. But to me, when I vote on these, it's depending on how that character is defined around that architectural style. So uh, just for clarity around if anyone's listening at home and has questions of why we do in some cases and in others we don't, that Richard kind of touched on too. And George, I think you had a question or a uh, comment? Just a comment. My, my guess is that uh, this is a Buffum house that that chimney was probably uh, taken down when the house was moved because it was two lots down. It's actually... Uh, gorgeous old picture even though it's in my collection it's I believe that nice <clears throat> George did that house sit on the lot where we heard a case last month on the deck same lot but you know the, the right in the corner of Beacon and Prospect no it was uh, where his house sits now if you go to the left there's a, a newer house there like, like a maybe a duplex and there's like a big empty lot. That's where it was. Between the there's a greenhouse and then there's a white one, right before Adam's house. It's an empty lot. Remind me, and this is not relevant to your application at all. Was this house moved twice, if I remember right, or was it only the once? Once, as far as I know. I believe just once. Is just all the once. Okay. I was out. for some reason thinking it might have been twice, but I couldn't remember. Is one like two months old? Yeah. Is that property still? Oh, he might own that now. Uh, Try to think of who owns it. They own, there's a big white house on the back too. Yeah. It was right. In, that was in the front. It was owned by Buffum in the beginning. Uh, moved. Uh, All right. But any other conversation, questions, concerns, motions. I'm gonna look at both sides until I see a hand. 
this. I'll motion to approve as presented. Move as presented. Do we have a second? I will second then. Um, all right. All those in favor, and it seems like we might have a little bit different of opinion, so please keep your hands up. All those in favor? All right. All those opposed? All right. Motion passes as presented. Thank you. No offense. Nope, none taken. None. I mean, I will tell you, I mean, looking at the historical picture, if that chimney was still in the house today, we wouldn't be having this conversation. I would keep yeah. it exactly as is because yeah. that's you can put that beautiful. Down. Huh? <laughs> More chimney to maintain. <laughs> All right, next on the agenda, workshop business. Tim, do you have anything to add to the workshop business? Um, yes, thank you, Madam Chair. The, the workshop convened tonight at 6 o'clock. Uh, we adjourned at, at 6.45, and the discussion was on um, a electronic rendition of what we were proposing was presented. <coughs> Excuse me. And... We also had a, a guest commentator from the Korea Technical Center director, Caitlin. Um, uh, Carrington. Her Carrington. I apologize. Caitlin, I'm sorry. I forgot your last name. Carrington. Uh, Carrington, thank you. Um, <clears throat> the uh, topic was whether or not that the Career Technical Center could help facilitate in the, in the uh, construction of these plaques it was seemingly a very positive conversation uh, the timeline seemed more palatable than first thought for them and they will be in further discussion amongst themselves to get back to the uh, us to see if it's something they can entertain with timelines if they can and until that time we won't have a, a reason to meet next month will need information from them in order to bring back to the committee to discuss that. So <clears throat> we're just waiting to hear back from them. So that I thought was a very productive uh, uh, meeting and we'll see where it goes when we hear back from them. Thank you, Tim. Any other workshop business or comments? If, if, I will open up to comments and miscellaneous, but workshop comments. All right, seeing there is none, now we will open it up to comments and miscellaneous. Richard, we'll go to you first. So I'm sure everybody's noticed we've lost some buildings that we approved to be torn down. Um, something they took note of, and I know it was a discussion when they got approved, was the reuse of granite on site where possible. The first thing they did was hauled all of that granite out of there. And now that the Summersworth Hotel is down, there's clearly going to need to be some sort of retaining wall there for whatever they do unless they put a building. My gut feeling is it's going to be a parking lot. I'm sad to see all the granite go first. Just something to keep in mind at how they've progressed with this project so far. Um, we lost a lot of granite. And I don't know if we'll get it back in any walls that might be needed. Um, on another note, the uh, mayor's task force on housing has met. This probably doesn't entertain us, uh, uh, apply to us much, but I do sit on that board as a representative from this board. So uh, just so you know, we have met one meeting. We attended a workshop with the planning board and the Stratford Regional Planning Commission that looked at um, seemed like a lot of stuff concerning housing and the climate change planning thing. It it seemed to be an interesting topic because I don't know if climate change really affects Summersworth as much as we need to be concerned with. Um, you know, we have a river, but flooding here isn't as big a concern, and that's really the biggest concerns that I can think of with climate change. Um, just, I, I wonder if we're not focusing at the right thing sometimes in that housing. But anyways, we're in the beginning stages of it all, more looking at goals and, you know, where to focus our efforts. So 
just my thoughts on it. Thank you for keeping us in the loop. I look forward to more updates. All right, any other communication or miscellaneous, George? Yes, I have one uh, with Dana. Um, actually, Michelle, uh, but Dana, I'm not sure if you know about Lydia's House of Hope. I was just wondering how that was going. I am not prepared with an update regarding that. <laughs> There's a window uh, right up in the top in the, in the attic area that has not been finished since they've done the house over and they've done a great job and this one window just coming up the hill stands out every time I walk up there and it's all they got to do is put trim on it and I guess I just don't understand and I've been asking for about a year what the, what the deal was with it but yeah that's that's the third floor window that's got absolutely no trim you can yeah. see where the trim is missing but there's yeah. nothing there and all they got to do is put it on and I just don't get it but anyway, I just wondered how that was going. If you could, I can follow up with Michelle. Yes, we did them both together because neither had edits. So that's why I asked. That's just for the sake of there is an edit. Okay, going back to. Um, it was under the, uh, my comment was the telephone pole forest was on Noble Street and George commented re also on Grove Street. So I just wanted to make sure that it's not one area in Grove Street. There's uh, three locations on Noble that I'm aware of and two on Grove Street and one of the place spaces on uh, Noble Street, there's actually three telephone poles all together. So not only did they replace an old one, they replaced the replacement. All right, so we will make a change. Um, we will put this back out to our commission of under section seven comments miscellaneous paragraph three, three technically, because there is a sentence above. Uh, Mr. Mativier also noted Noble Street has a telephone pole forest. And then after getting um, options for getting rid of old ones, uh, George, our um, Mr. Poulin, noted two on Grove Street. That'd be more accurate. accurate. Thank you. Yep. All right. So, will we put a motion? Do we have a motion to re-vote on these changes, Liz? Sorry, I have another change. Yes. Uh, <laughs> we're late to this. We are. <laughs> Since we're on it. Um, the item sorry i'm trying to figure out so how to describe wh this while she looks for that on page three nope. um just below the bold text as ms newen indicated she would like to see the balishes come up above and have finished tops this should read um she would like to see the posts come up above the rail and have finished tops i wouldn't i didn't want the balusters to come above Real. Okay, I got you at page three, but which part of page three? Uh, at the top, there's uh, paragraphs are C, Mark Cross, then the next is Mark Cross was present, and then Ms. Newen indicated. It's in the paragraph where Ms. Newen indicated at the top of page three. Oh, I, I have you. Okay, so um, indicated she would like to see not balusters, but posts? Yes. Come up above, and you could add the rail or rail and have finished tops. Yeah, ballast is coming above the rail would be weird. All right, so we will um, edit the second paragraph after section C from Mark Cross for um, indicate she would like to see posts come up above the rail and have finished tops. Yep. All right. Thank you. All right, any other changes or comments on our minutes? If not, we will reopen this up to a motion. A motion to accept the minutes as amended. All right, we have a motion. Do we have a second? We have a second. All right, all those in favor. Aye. And I apologize for not realizing the first vote was for oh. both. <laughs> not, I knew there were two, but I wasn't, I missed the fart that one's for the commission and uh, one was for the. No problem, we got it in. Yeah, all right. <clears throat>
All right. We'll go back now to communications and miscellaneous. Um, I just had a quick one. I was very pleasantly surprised. I knew that the historic um, street markers were coming. I didn't realize how many had been put up on my drive in today since it was light out when I got <laughs> to drive through Summersworth today. So I was very happy to see along the main drag, almost every cross street had the historic uh, sign up on my way in. So very pleasantly surprised to see that. And I hope others have taken note of it as well because it is really helping define the historic district. I understand so. it, right? There's more to come, right? Yes, they are supposed to be doing quite a bit of every time they need to replace a street sign that they will be putting those up. If not, they're pushing a little more than I thought they would actually. So, yes. I just, I had a thought on that. And obviously they've done all the cross streets along High Street. I just wonder if they didn't do the other end of the street. Wouldn't it make more sense that when you order, say, a Grove Street sign, you get multiple? It might be more cost effective for the city. That, I think, would be a question for recreation. No. I, I, think, works, I think I Public thought works, that the discussion you. about those signs where they were going to be on the cross street of High Street for certain and at the wherever other streets leave the district. So in your example, when you're getting at the top of Grove Street, you haven't left the historic district yet. And then that, that would encompass the perimeter. And then, and they then they'd work their way in. Yeah. Okay. That's what I remember. But. I, I guess I missed that, but it just from a common <clears throat> sense end of it, it just seems that if you're going to order one sign. You're right. You, like made. I was talking at, at the committee that, you know, once you set up, you, you make as many as you need at that time. Yeah. So that, and that's the mindset I had with this. It, you know, I'm certainly not criticizing it. I love the fact that we've got these. It just seems. Yeah. And, and I might have remembered that process wrong, but anyway. It just seems like if you're ordering one, why not order all you need for that street? It all comes down to budget. And I understand that, and maybe <laughs> that played into it, too. Maybe I don't know all the facts. It just it was some common sense that just jumped out at me. Maybe there's other reasons. And I have one more comment, and it's an, an accolade, really. The, uh, and I haven't, I've seen the two, two new houses that are on Grove. I'm sorry, not Grove, but Noble, across from the Pines. Um, and they're, they're, they're decent. I mean, they're not, they're brand new. They look new, but they have some nice features with the wider corner boards and some decorations and uh, prominent overhangs. So it, it fit well. It's certainly not Flinter Street. So, uh, you know, I'm glad we did and made that, those decisions at least there. There may be some pieces of that that could have been better and not perfect, but... I'll take it. I would agree. They certainly blend in far better than Winter Street, like you said. I, I think it comes down to those wide corner boards, trim, and overhangs. Those are like just every old house has them. And it looks great. And it's all brand new material, and it's and not yeah. fake. It's good. It's all modern materials, all well, well built, and looks good. I, again, they're... Well, I will say keep that job. in mind when um, another subcommittee from the mayor is going to happen. Um, for the infill conversation we had early, late last year. Sorry, I keep forgetting we're in a new year. Um, so keep that in mind because that's a good example, right, of something that succeeded or that we're happy with, correct? Mm -hmm. so, right, and there's one, there was one house that I haven't gone to visit yet. There was one, st one street behind it. Um, Mount Vernon. Yeah, did the house get built? I I know the foundation was in. I think they've started building, but I oh, haven't. The windows are ready. Yeah, I haven't. Oh, so it's not to that point yet. So I, we're so when that one's finished, if it's mimics at least the, the construction style of these two, which I sure it was supposed to. It was the same person right? building. So but, that's yes. We have three now. That'd make four very good examples mm -hmm. of how modern homes, modern materials can really fit in well. The one near your house, Richard, is a great example. Yep. I would agree. Um, All four of them are good examples. Yeah, good examples of I mean, what you we'll need to do, to and this is examples of what we need you to try to, mm -hmm. you know, follow. But yep. anyway, yep. I'll, right. I'll make a motion to adjourn. All right. We have a motion. Do we have a second? We got a second. All those in favor? Aye. We are adjourned. <laughs>